This is not a Raspberry Pi Pico. Despite its tiny size and castellated edges, this is actually a full Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. Well, sorta. At open source, probably the most interesting encounter I had was with Jonathan Clark. You see, I was on a reverse engineering panel at open source, but I mentioned on Twitter, I'm like totally not someone who I'd call myself a reverse engineer. At best, I often take things apart, break them half the time, and sometimes I might figure out how part of something works. And sometimes I get to work with cool companies like LumaField to get scans of things like this that I'll go into later in this video. Jonathan, on the other hand, took a Pi Zero 2W, one of these things, desoldered every chip on the board, then sat there sanding down the circuit board by hand, layer by layer, to take these pictures. That's already cool enough, but then he went in and reverse engineered the entire PCB design with help from the partial schematics Raspberry Pi provides. Then he built his own version that just so happens to sit in the same form factor as a Raspberry Pi Pico. The hardest part of that was reverse engineering the entire pinout of the custom Raspberry Pi RP3A0 chip that has all the memory, CPU, and GPU for the Pi Zero. And he put all that in the spreadsheet. Now, this is ridiculous, and I'm going to link to Jonathan's write-up of it once he has it published, so check the description for that. But one question I think a lot of people might have, where can I get one? Well, you can't. See, the problem is this is somewhat of a one-off, and that may seem like a lot of effort for a one-off, but to make one of these, even if you already have all of Jonathan's work to build off of, it's quite a journey. You basically have to buy a Pi Zero 2W, desolder a ton of components off it, resolder them all on the new PCB, and hope it all works. And not everything works on here. This is one of the first couple prototypes he made, and he even gave me the little bear PCB so I can see how it works, and <laughs> thanks Jonathan. One thing I love about a lot of PCB designs is how the designers can leave little touches like this to show the human side of it. And like, I covered this in my Pi Zero 2W review, but this is my first time seeing it on the PCB level. Raspberry Pi hid their own logo in the pinout of their chip. How fun is that? But anyway, I put Pi OS on a micro SD card, plugged it in, and plugged in a micro HDMI adapter. And that doesn't really work out if you use the USB-C port because of how close they are to each other. The best way to interface with this thing is through like a debug probe, because Wi-Fi is also not included, at least not yet. And even there, I was having trouble with the serial console, it just kept rebooting every 30 seconds, and I'm not quite sure why. This thing is not perfect, and it gets pretty hot too, since there's even less board space than a Pi Zero 2W to dissipate the heat. But that's why they call this stuff hardware. Compared to a normal Pico, the board is a tiny bit longer to fit the ports on top. But those ports actually fix two gripes I have with the Pi Zero. The Zero uses mini HDMI, which is different from all the other Pis, and on top of that, it's the only modern Pi still using micro USB for power. But yeah, some of the quirks with this thing like the dead HDMI port might get fixed in another revision. But building like an actual product isn't Jonathan's goal, and that's not often the goal of any reverse engineering, actually. Jonathan said he's trying to take an old Blackberry and replace its guts with modern hardware. And he already had it going on a microcontroller, but he wanted to see if he could get the full Linux experience going and still fit everything inside a standard Blackberry case. Why? For learning, and to see how far he can get in PCB design and firmware development. A lot of times you do things not because they're practical, but because they keep your brain sharp, or just because they scratch an itch. Like, take my friend Ahmad's years-long, painstaking project to reverse engineer the entire IBM PC-110. He's releasing all the schematics as he goes in this project. I spoke with him about it at NEB this year, and he said he literally wore away his fingerprints sanding down PCBs to find all the traces. And he's also working with John McMaster, who I also visited this year, to delid and reverse engineer a bunch of the proprietary chips that make it run. They're not doing it for money or to build some product off it, they're doing it for curiosity and preservation. Without efforts like these, the hardware designs we use every day will just get lost to history. And so I'm contributing my little part too. I'm working on some projects I'll get to later this year, and I got to work with LumaField to get 3D scans of the insides of a few Pi models, including the Pi Zero 2W. And well, let's walk through that really quick. So this is called Voyager, and it's uh, LumaField's kind of web UI to look at the scans that you get out of one of their machines. And uh, this is a 3D reconstruction based on some x-ray images. Basically, it, it puts it in like a CT scanner that revolves the device. So these are the raw x-ray scans, the image data. And what LumaField does is their software will, will put this all together into these uh, reconstructions that give you data on like the types of metal and the depth and the 
thickness and all that. And the cool thing is, if we zoom into this thing, you can really see some details in here. Uh, for instance, you can see all the solder balls inside of different parts of it. And this is really helpful for companies like Raspberry Pi when they're inspecting their devices and they're um, you know, kind of taking a look around underneath like this metal shield. Instead of having to take apart everything and deconstruct it, which can actually affect whether or not something looks wrong or not, they can take a scan like this and see are there voids in our solder balls or, or are some of the solder balls not working correctly on the, the automated machine that we use to put them in. So they can inspect all that stuff. So that's really cool, but for reverse engineering, it's uh, really nice because you can look inside of it without having to do all the painstaking labor of sanding things down by hand, which I'm really sad that I didn't get to this uh, before Jonathan started his work. This probably would have helped him quite a bit because you can really go into different parts of it and uh, you know zoom in and see the, the little details. Like on here, if I go to the y-axis, we can actually go through each layer of the PCB. So you can see here's the, uh, the layer with all the solder balls that connect the actual chip package to the PCB. Then we can go down and here's one layer of the PCB. There's vias that go through to another layer of the PCB. Uh, keep going down to another layer and another layer. And so you can map things out that way without having to take anything apart. And then it's even cool because you can see up above the PCB, this is inside the chip. This is the actual silicon wafer that has the CPU, the GPU, and all the, the interfaces. You can see all the little, the little pins that come off of it that go out to the interposer board that connects it to the PCB itself. And then if we go up even further, you can see there's more pins that go up to this thing uh, up here at the top. This is the DRAM, the actual memory chip that sits on top of the SOC on the, the RP3 chip. So very cool what you can see with this technology. And you can even go in here, like this looks like a very good uh, solder job. But uh, if you had problems, you can use the tools up here to check. Uh, their, their tools will actually check how bad or how good the solder is and give you a report on that if it runs. So really awesome stuff that they have. Um, you can even see, like if you wanted to see how the Wi-Fi stuff was set up without having to take off that metal cover, which is kind of a pain to desolder, you can just see everything inside of here, all the metal parts at least. And, uh, and you can do the same thing. You can, you can zoom in and see where all the traces go, see how that antenna line comes off of here with the uh, capacitor that goes down. And then you can also go over and, and check out this antenna and see the, the neat little PCB antenna on the Raspberry Pi and how there's a cavity in there that, that kind of gives resonance so that the Wi-Fi signal is, is actually pretty good on here. So a lot of really cool stuff that you can see with this technology. Oh, and before I forget, Lumafield's actually gracious enough to let me share this with you. So there will be a link to this in the description of this, this uh, video. And if you want to take a look inside of here and play around with it, be my guest and uh, be Lumafield's guest. I'd like to thank Jonathan again for sending this over. Make sure you check out his write-up on it, which I'll link to below. Also, thanks to Lumafield for helping me with the scans. Let me know in the comments what other wild reverse engineering projects you've seen or things that you'd like to see. And uh, yeah, it gets wild on Level 2 Jeff. See you later.